Another 10 reasons to move to Moodle 2. This presentation is the third in a sequence of three presentations, so be sure to check out the first two. Now, Moodle 2.0 contained a significant number of compelling new features, and Moodle 2.1 also pushed a feature list to improve the platform. Between them, Moodle 2 now has a large range of feature improvements over Moodle 1.9. So which are the top 10? Join me in this road of exploration through some of the Moodle 2 features. So what can you say about the Moodle navigation block? Well, it raw. The navigation is personalized, so it relates to you and your permission. The new navigation block of Moodle provides easy access in one place to all of a user's courses and topics within those courses. So if you're doing a program where you have six different modules, you can jump from the content in one module to another using the new navigation with just one page load directly where you want to go. This is going to be a huge time saver for students and lecturers alike. The settings block is a great centralization of all the setting related data. Now, what do I mean? Well, if you're in a course, it'll provide access to the course settings that you have permission for. If you're in a forum, it provides access to the forum settings that you have permission for. This standardization of where settings appear for an activity or a course or a user saves a lot of time for existing Moodle users once you have got used to it. And for new users, it just makes sense and works. The new HTML editor is the bee's knees. It's now this industry standard tiny MCE, and it seems to be in every web application nowadays. It's more standard proof and more usable than other WYSIWYG editors. The deep integration into the new repository features makes life easier. The one thing I like the most is a resizable editing area, which is ace. Overall, this is just much easier to use. The new theme options and support are just great, providing excellent browser detection. It also provides the ability to better support mobile devices. So you can have a specific normal theme for the web and a different one for mobile devices. The 20 or so themes which ship with Moodle 2 provide a diverse choice of styles and most of them also come with some extra settings so you can customize them through the backend interface. The new activity completion recording is really useful. Course creators are now able to specify if a resource or an activity should be tracked for completion or not, and if so, how it is to be completed. Should it be done automatic through a grade or through being accessed or viewed? or by enabling the student to tick the activity as complete when they're done with it. There's also a great course report to provide an overview of the status of completion for all students. Community hubs are a neat way of sharing courses between Moodle sites. You can register your site to the hub and then choose to share the course either as a download or just marketing its availability so that if someone wants to enroll on it, they know where to go. There is a global Moodle community hub called Mooch on hub.moodle.org and you can also set up your own local or private hub sh should you wish, such as in a school district or on a campus between faculties. Hubs are also very useful for storing course templates or even just isolated configured activities in Moodle that you might want to reuse sometime. After a student has completed some work in Moodle, it will be nice to be able to extract that effort and Moodle 2 provides this feature with the new portfolio API. A user can elect to publish or save items from Moodle to other places, either their desktop through downloading or by exporting to Google Docs, Mahara, Box.net, Flickr or Picasa. The export supports multiple formats and certainly brings the usefulness of having Moodle and Mahara to a new exciting level. Enrollment controls in courses are now very powerful. You can simply select which of the enrollment plugins are enabled easily and configure them to work as you want them to. If you want to have self-enrollment now capped at a number of users, that's fine. Just set a value. If you want guest access treated in another way, well, then you can do that too. For managing groups of users, you can also now set a cohort enrollment. The feedback activity in Moodle 2 now provides you an easy way to create custom surveys. When creating the feedback survey, you can select from a good range of question types and layout options. It is very easy to configure, and you can simply reuse the form in multiple courses. Managing roles and capabilities in Moodle 2 is much simpler than in Moodle 1.9. There's a new improved interface, which provides a better overview of roles and abilities. The administrator role is now isolated, so that it's a much more of a decision in assigning admin powers to a user. There is also a new manager role, which sits between the teacher and admin, sort of. You'll just need to try it out. So that was it. 
and other 10 reasons to move to Moodle 2. This presentation was the third in a sequence of three presentations. Be sure to check the other two out. Also, be sure to check out on my blog, someRandomThoughts.com, for information on the poll to decide which are the 10 top reasons to move to Moodle 2. Thank you.